Hello and welcome to the latest Fellside WhatsApp and uh, YouTube reflection. Now there's no doubt that there's a lot of doom and gloom on the news just at the present time, what with uh, the rising death toll from the virus and um, the news as well that we're probably going to be in this lockdown for another three weeks at least. That certainly seems to be the latest estimate. Well, that's what I can gather from watching the news anyway. So I thought, uh, first of all, on this reflection, something hopefully to uh, make you smile and uh, take things, uh, take your mind off things, I should say, just for uh, a moment or two. And a few years ago, there was a book published and it was called The Scroll, the Tabloid Bible by a chap named Nick Page. And Nick's idea was very, very simple. He thought if tabloid newspapers was around at the time of Jesus, how would they actually have reported things, uh, the miracles that he did, the things that occurred? And obviously in such a book, you'd not be surprised to find that there is a section on Easter. And uh, so this is Nick's view of how a tabloid newspaper would have recorded events. The headline is, you can't keep a good man down. More appearances of Jesus reported. Further appearances of Jesus have been reported throughout the region. On the Emmaus Road, two people were joined by a stranger who started to explain the scriptures to them. When they got to the inn where they were staying, they sat down for a meal together and knew it was Jesus. It was the way he handled that bread, said one of them. That and the fact that he disappeared immediately afterwards as though into thin air. In a separate incident, he appeared to his disciples while they were fishing. We'd been fishing all night and caught nothing, said one. Then this figure appeared on the seashore and told us to cast our nets to the other side. Within minutes, they were heaving with fish. We took the fish ashore and he cooked us breakfast. The authorities were playing down the incidents. For a dead man, he doesn't half get about, doesn't he? said their spokesman. I think you'll find that this is a simple case of wish fulfilment. The man on the seashore was probably just one of those celebrity chefs. They're always cooking in weird places, aren't they? And there are many cases of people mysteriously disappearing in restaurants, usually when they get the bill. So you get the kind of idea uh, behind this. And uh, there's actually a statement as well from Pontius Pilate. Dear citizens, you will no doubt have heard some of the rumours floating around Jerusalem at this time about Jesus. I want to state on record and quite categorically that whatever might have happened, and we don't know whether anything has happened, but if it has, which it might have, then it was, in all probability, nothing to do with me. I wasn't even here at the time it happened. If it did happen, I'm not entirely sure where I was. But I was probably a long, long, long way away from here, making very tough decisions, which actually I'm very good at. Everybody's friend, Pontius Pilate. So some of idea, some idea of, uh, of there being a, a, a daily Jerusalem or whatever, all those years ago, that could be how it was recorded. But for... The main purpose of this reflection, I just want to draw your attention to one verse in the Bible. And it's from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 18. And it says this, For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And I've been quite struck over the last few days with the Word for Today Bible reading booklets. Uh, so some of you may have read these for yourself and uh, they were over a few days um, focusing on the cross, the cross of Jesus. And uh, one of the articles says this, God dying on the cross in our Lord Jesus Christ for our sins sounds like foolishness to some people. The philosophy is, if I cannot understand it, I won't accept it. And that's where they get it wrong. Salvation comes through faith alone. And Jesus once said, 
unless you become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So simple, almost childlike faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross is all that's required. And as I say, and as the article says, that can seem foolishness in the eyes of the world. Indeed, that's what Paul was getting at in that verse that I've just read. The cross, foolishness in the eyes of the world. What does it mean? How can people be saved through that? And I remember in, in days gone by, because my story is that uh, I came to faith, I was converted as a young man in my early 20s. And before that, Easter had just been uh, a time of being off school in the school holidays. And then as I got older, um, it was just time off work for a few days. And, oh, you know, the glory of, uh, if I can put it that way, of not having to set the alarm clock on uh, Good Friday or Easter Monday and having a lying and taking things easy. That's uh, all that it was. And uh, if I took note of the real meaning of Easter and uh, the story of Jesus and the cross, then it was just a case of uh, what I'd heard at school uh, years previously and no effect on my life whatsoever. So the cross in that sense is foolishness. It doesn't, it doesn't mean a thing until we apply it to our lives, to ourselves by faith. And so I want to encourage you in this little reflection to keep looking at the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you've got a palm cross. Perhaps you've got a, a little wooden cross. Perhaps you, you've got one of those uh, little crosses, handheld crosses that, that you hold and you can hold in your hand and, and carry it about with you in your pocket. Just, uh, just have a look at something like that and, uh, and focus on the cross. And it's there we see the power and the love of God in all its might. The love of God experienced in the Lord Jesus Christ coming, going the way of the cross to die for our sins. And that is indeed foolishness in the eyes of the world. So I'd just like to encourage you to keep looking at the cross. And as I started this little reflection with and talking about the doom and gloom of the news and, uh, and so on. And it's when we concentrate on those negative things that we can lose sight of the cross. We can ask those questions. Is faith worth it? What does it mean? We can have our doubts, as, as Thomas did in the Easter story. But by focusing on the cross and all that it means, we see the, the love of God in its fullness in our Lord Jesus Christ. So can I encourage you in that, please, to keep looking at the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, to reflect on all that he accomplished there, all that he did for you, that he went to save you from your sins, and that he is with us in all circumstances of life, the good times, the bad times, the times of crisis as we're going through now. The Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of his resurrected spirit, is walking alongside, alongside us. So he's with you right now, whether you're feeling uh, a bit doomy and gloomy yourself, Perhaps you're really fed up of having to stay in. Perhaps the, the lockdown is getting to you. You're not connecting with people. You're not meeting with people. Uh, none of us can go out like, uh, like we used to, certainly uh, for the next few weeks. But the Lord is with you in that situation. He's with our nurses and our doctors on the front line in the NHS system. He's with our curate Susan as she goes back into the medical world for the next few weeks. And uh, he's there with her on the front line. Uh, he's with you, he's with me, as we endure this, uh, this lockdown together. But as I say, I encourage you to keep looking at that cross, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, and reflect on all that it means. So again, a reminder of that verse. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So with that, I close this little reflection. I'm due to be with you again on Sunday. I'm open, hoping to uh, record a simple little service of morning prayer that will hopefully 
be an encouragement to you uh, to include a reading, some prayers, and other reflection in that. So uh, until then, bye for now. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.